Hey, this is Glendon with How to Make a Living Without a Job. Quick knowledge drop. Starting next week, we're going to do a series of webinars on how to make money with storage unit auctions 2013. You want to be on it because there's a lot of good information that will be put out and stuff I've never talked about, not even in the books. So if you're looking to probably get some inventory for your resale business through storage auctions, you definitely want to check out the webinar. Hit the link below. Now, this video is just, you know, just me getting some ch stuff off my chest. Right now, Mark's my fourth year doing this. And I get a lot of people, most are good, most of the questions are good, but I get people that send me 10 paragraph long emails to all of you people. You need to buy a console. Because I sat down and I did one yesterday. 10 paragraphs. No, it was literally 10 paragraphs. And I answered everything, but I didn't send the email. I wrote the person who sent me the email. I said, look, I took the time. I've got all these points addressed. And it took me two hours to do this. And this is what I'm going to do. You want the information, you need to buy a console. Do you know I got cussed out? I got totally cussed out. I was told that I need to help people. I should take out of my time and give to this person. And this is the big problem I have. This is the big problem I have. Two hours of my life to help out this person who may not even use the advice. This is the thing. And there are many of you out there that's like, you know, advice should be free, uh, help people out. I was poor. Very, very poor. My circumstances did not change until my mentality changed. That's when my circumstances changed. It's not a money problem. It's not an education problem. It's not a gender problem. It is a fucking commitment to success problem. <clears throat> that, that, that's the deal because currently I have a lot of webinars and I'm going to keep them going on. They're a dollar to a ten. Go to Gumroad, hit dollar. If you want to get more, you can. And you just have to show up to get great information. That's all you have to do. I have people that's like, hey, um, can I get that special? And I clearly put out that, hey, if you don't show up, you can get it later on as recorded. It will be more. For a dollar, you just got to show up. That's all you have to do. Show up. And people won't show up. And what I know and what I'm trying to tell you is you can have the best information in the world. But if you are a sorry ass, slack jaw, weak minded, little pussy bitch, it's not going to help you. Because you would want me to hold your dick. You want me to take you to the bathroom, pull down your pants pull your dick out, aim it at the toilet, and hold it while you go. That's what, when people send me those emails, that's what happens. I will do a video or something on a question that I get frequently, because it makes sense. Like the deal, I recently did with the college deal, and the guy thanked me. He was very happy with the information, and he's, it gave him some guidance. What I'm saying is, if you want detailed, critical, tailored information, you need to buy a console. I'm going to give you a really, really good reason that I turned profit rogue, so to speak. When I first started doing this, I spent, on average... 15 to 20 hours a week on the phone talking to people who had all of these questions about the storage auction game. I'm talking about every phone call was an hour at least. Every phone call. 
it was just my time because, you know, if you don't have an unlimited cell phone plan, you're just stupid these days. So I noticed that as I had these conversations, most of the conversations were oriented towards, can I confirm that this shit's not going to work for me? That's what they really want to do. The ones who were like, I can do this. They already had it in their mind that they could do it, be successful with storage auctions. Those conversations were totally different than those of confirmation conversations. And bar none, <clears throat> I got, after a few weeks, I got a feel for who was going to buy the book. And I was doing this and having these hour long conversations when my ebook was 1995. I did it because, and people are like, hey, don't do that, just let them buy. I was like, you know, I need more data. I need to talk to people. I need more data. See, I'm not opposed to talking to people if it leads to something and it, it gave me information that I consider priceless. Because when someone approaches me via email, I can tell by the terminology that they use who I'm dealing with. If they're using what I call loser technology, it, I don't mess with them. Because it's already in your head that you are not going to succeed. It's already there. I can see it. There's nothing that I can do to change that mindset. And when I see these people, I just move on. It is a exercise in self-punishment. I would get less pain from running, running into a brick wall fast as I could repeatedly that's what it's like dealing with these people and like I said I got cussed out I got totally cussed out uh, you know you are a scam artist you're not helping people and this person wanted me to get I'm talking about projections what kind of warehouse I mean all kinds of stuff that I have been paid and for those who don't know, my consult my my uh, consulting rate is four hundred bucks an hour. I've been paid four hundred bucks for less work than what was in this email, and I and the reason I did it is once again it, it's it's great information. It's a great exercise. It keeps my chops up, and there are people out there like you should just do it for free. Fuck you. You, fuck you, free. Fuck you. The only person out there that's saying it should be done for free is someone that's either trying to get you to do something later or someone who is so ass out financially that they're trying to trick you into doing something for their benefit. Because this is how it goes. Bill Gates did not start giving away money until he built up his business and he did everything he wanted to do for himself, his family. And when he reached that saturation level of this is enough for me, then he started giving money away. This is when he started doing stuff and helping out people because he had an incredible run. An incredible run. I'm still working. <laughs> I am still building the empire. And... I look back to some of my personal experiences and I think one, being in the military helped me out tremendously. I'm going to tell you one of the places that I got this mindset. I'm a, when I was in the military, my uh, MOS was, God, was it 92, yeah, 92 Bravo, I think, it's been so long, a medical laboratory technician. Our A... IT, that's when uh, you go to school to learn your MOS, was a trip. It was, um, since my last name ended with a C, we had AM classes. I was in class at fucking 4.30 in the morning. And we started out with about 148, 150 people. That's what my class started out with. Every week we had these tests that were called crucials. And they were called crucials for a reason. If you passed, you got to continue on. If you didn't pass, see ya! You went down the hill to become a 91 Alpha, which was like a nurse tech, medical tech. And, you know, just to give you 
the dichotomy between being up the hill and down the hill. Up the hill, we were clean. We uh, were white. Um, we really were like college students for most for the most part. We were like college students, and it was amazing the difference. We got up. We had one cadre. Not, um, for, for those, not a lot of supervision. Not a lot of supervision. We just had, like, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to be. Show the fuck up. And we did that. So, you, you essentially, there were study groups. Uh, that I remember this was Espinosa. She was actually in the Navy. The only uh, members we didn't have there, because people were from the Navy. Air Force had their own school. Navy didn't. And um, so we had Navy folks in my class. And there was this one girl, Espinosa. She was a, she actually was like, uh, hold on, I got people driving crazy. Don't know the meaning of a flashing light. Um, lost my train of thought. That's what happens when you do these driving videos. But no, with Espinosa, she actually was, uh, had the highest grade in the class and I befriended her and I hung out with her and I was in her study group because it was incumbent upon us it was told to us and we were expected to get the material because the consequence was if you didn't get the material you were going to wash out of the class and you were going to go down the hill and become a 91 Alpha so you go from wearing your crispy ice cream whites not a lot of supervision, pretty much off on the weekends to TA-50, back to BDUs and people yelling at you every day. I was extremely motivated not to go down the hill. Extremely motivated. So, with those crucials, and I, I will tell you, I had a few nail-biting moments because there was a few tests. There was two. I passed by the, the skin of my teeth. I mean, one wrong question, TA-50 veal, baby. I was just like, whew. and it was after those two cliffhangers, I really started spending more time with Espinosa. Way more time. I mean, we became best buds. She had this friend, Cruz? Ooh, Lord. Um, I was always with her. Always. My grades came up. What I'm telling you is, when you're left to your own devices and the expectations are laid out, if you don't get it, it's because of you. I knew I was deficient in some things and I found someone to help me out. It was that simple. I found someone to help me out. I put myself in a study group. I worked harder because those were the expectations. I didn't expect anyone to hold my dick when I went to the bathroom. It was incumbent on me to get the information. What I'm trying to tell you is, if you send me a long-ass, whiny, bitchy-ass email because I didn't get back to you, or you don't want to pay for a consult, you're telling me a lot about yourself. You're telling me a lot. Like, you know, if you don't want to pay for the information, Watch the videos. There's 700 videos on this channel. 700 plus. I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I can say without even being cocky, because you know it's cocky if it's not true or is exaggerated, that if you spend 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week, or say 20 hours a month on this channel watching my videos from 2009 up to now, you will get information that will help you make money. But it's not free because of the opportunity cost of your time. That's the thing that seems to mess up a lot of people. I don't want to watch the videos. I don't want to have to think. I want Glendon to break it down, give me an email, give me all the high points and craft the information in my situation, but as for paying him, fuck him. He should help me. 
he's living well, he's doing this, he's got the time, he should help me. And the reason that I now laugh and I know what I speak of, I used to be you. I used to be just like you. I used to think just like that. Someone should help me. Someone should devote their time, their energy, their resources for my cause, and I don't have to pay them shit because they got it, I don't have it, and I want it. That is the premise of a loser mindset. That's the premise. I don't I, I don't go begging people when I was poor as shit as a kid, because there was two levels of evolution. I was taught I had to work for what I wanted. That was a lesson that was instilled into me. And I got caught up in some stupid stuff, hung around the wrong people, and I started making some really stupid decisions. Massively stupid decisions. Couldn't make that turn, because here on my ass. Um, massively stupid decisions that manifested into some very bad outcomes for me. And this happened because I wasn't taking ownership of my success. I was not taking ownership of my success. I had placed my success in the hands of other people. And when they mishandled my success and I didn't get the success that I wanted, I was frustrated. I was bitter. I was pissed off. I was like, fuck the world. The world doesn't give a shit about me. Fuck the world. Loser mentality. Total loser mentality. And one day, I woke up. And I realized, no one owed me shit. No one. No one owed me a damn thing. And I started waking up and I was like, okay, I got to get it on my own. I got to reach out. And this is something that I have noticed. That when you are working really, really hard, when you are doing the things that you need to do, people will show up in your life that will help you. And it's, it's, if, you, if you're not really getting this lesson, when you fixate your mind on being successful and you put in the work, you create a different kind of energy for yourself. And this energy, this super, super energy is so freaking awesome that it will draw and attract people that have the skill sets, the abilities, the connections, all of that stuff that you don't have, it will draw them in, into your life when you become serious. Because if you send a stranger an email and you're pissed off because they didn't get back to you or they didn't give you the results you wanted because you wanted something massive from them, you you don't get how this thing works. You're not understanding how this thing really works. Because... When you work hard, when you really, really put out, you just have a different kind of energy. If you have not worked so hard that when you just laid in your bed and the next thing you know it was morning, you still had your shoes on, you still had your clothes on, that you the minute that your body hit that mattress, it was a it was a wrap. If you never experienced weeks and months and years like that, you're not working hard enough. Let me say that again. You are not working hard enough for your personal success. Because when you do things like that, you figure out what your limits are. I cannot remember how many times that happened to me when I was in the storage auction business. Wake up, I still got my shoes and stuff on from the day before because I was so exhausted. If you have not worked like that, you are full of shit. Because I'm not saying you have to do that all the time, but at some point in your life, you need to put out like that to find out what you were made of. You 
really need to do it. Because when you work that hard, people respect you. Your family. I mean, I was dating this girl. And she's probably one of the sweetest people I've ever met in my life. I would wake up sometimes. She would come over. I would wake up and I would be in bed and my clothes would be good because she took them off. Because I like I knew I fell asleep on top of the covers. And I kind of remember this dreamlike state where like, you know, I was like up and walking like walking zombies. Ooh. And, you know, and I wake up in the morning, she'd be gone and it'd be breakfast. When you work that hard, you draw people like that to you. They want to help you. They want to be there for you because that energy is so fucking awesome. You get those kind of people. You know why? Because you're becoming somebody. You're changing your energy. You're going from that loser energy to that superhero energy. And it draws people. It brings people to you. It brings money to you. It brings a new life to you. But if you are of the mentality of, I need someone to hold my dick. Hold my dick, please, because it's so short. Could you get the tweezers and hold my dick? Could you hold my dick? Because I can't reach it because I'm so fat. Or my dick is little, or I don't feel like holding it. Would you hold my dick? If you're that person, your life is going to perpetually suck big, monkey, hairy-ass balls every day that you breathe. That tickle on your chin is the monkey ball hair. That's what's going on. Because you're sucking balls and your hands are holding those balls and you're wondering why you're peeing down your leg. Because you don't want to hold your own dick. You want someone to hold it and direct it. And when you get out of that mentality, something else wonderful happens. Your dick gets bigger. It becomes self-directed. It becomes energized. You feel like you can fuck anything and win. But as long as you've got that loser mentality, that wimp, bitch-ass, someone owes me something mentality, you will forever be a loser. You will be that person, 60 years old, 70 years old, talking about, in high school, I caught the long bun, the long bomb, and we won the state championship. Yes, we did. It was a great moment. You 70 fucking years old, and the greatest accomplishment of your life is the high school football championship when you were a teenager? Get the fuck out of here, Al Bundy. Get the fuck out of here. I don't talk about the shit that you used to do. Make your life, and this is a choice. This is a total choice. Talk about shit that you're currently doing. The things that you're making happen right now. The things that you're, you're dreaming about. You can make a great life right now where your conversation is, I'm doing and I have done recently. I don't, you know, when I meet people, I don't even like talking about the storage auction business from the standpoint of financial because it's the, it's the past. You know what Janet Jackson put out in like 1986? What have you done lately, motherfucker? What have you done lately? You know, I knew I couldn't live on the laurels of that forever and ever. It was a great accomplishment for me. It was a nice win, but I couldn't live my rest of my life on what I did. I realized that. Neither can you. You can't do that. You got to get out of that. So if your ass peaked in high school, and I'm going to tell you something. This is a little trick to, uh, you know, see where your friends are mentally, people you really know. If they have pictures frequently of themselves in high school and college, and that shit was 10, 15, 20 years ago, they're telling you those were the best days of their life. That's when they looked looked at looked at the dead the best. That's when they looked at good. Cause right now they ain't looking like shit, and that's and they don't feel it. That's why they keep putting up old ass pictures as their profile picture because they peaked early. They peaked early, man. They peaked early. 
And do you, you do you want to be that person? Do you want to be the person that peaked early? I want, and I, this was a Richard Pryor skit. It, I, I, I'm going to use pussy, but it's really a term for life. When um, he was like, hey, when was the last time you got some pussy? And he's like, yesterday. When, you know, you asked me, when's the last time you did something relevant in your life? I want to say yesterday. Not last year, not two years ago, not in high school, not in college, but yesterday. Which means you got to push, which means you got to drive. You cannot sit back and just, you know, live off a few good wins. You really got to step it up. You have got to step up your game. You've got to stop with the namby-pamby loser. Oh, woe is me. Oh, someone needs to help me out. And, uh, and uh, the person who sent me that email and cussed me out, I fucking hope you unsubscribe. I really do, because you're going to be real frustrated going forward. You're going to be extremely frustrated, because coming in the rest of 2013, there's going to be some awesome information coming down. There's going to be things I'm going to talk about that I've never talked about before, new video concepts, all kinds of crazy stuff. And if you know that my hour per hour consulting rate is 400 bucks, you know, it's 300. Yes, I raised it, because I believe in me. I know I'm worth it. I believe I'm worth it. I believe that's the kind of value that I provide to people. I can look at your situation in an hour and give you insights that will help you make way more than what you pay me. That's the deal. I can do that. And with that confidence, it came from going through fucking hell. It came from having a life of misery, despondency, I went from a lack mindset, a scarcity mindset, to an abundance mindset. 2009. I said, fuck the economy. Fuck what everyone else is saying. I'm going to write books and I'm going to make money. And I did that shit. 2010. I increased it. 2011. I increased it. 2012. Okay, storage auction thing actually lasted longer than you thought. Time to change the game again. And it's time to win. And it's time to make more money. That is a self-directed for self-fulfilling prophecy that I'm casting out into the universe. I'm not going, oh, oh, no, it's life so bad. Life is bad. Life is, oh, life is fucking me. Oh, oh, there's that big penis in the sky. Where'd it go? Why, why is there pressure at my ass? If you are running hard, the big penis in the sky can't catch you. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're running hard, the big penis in the sky can't fuck you. The big penis in the sky moves slowly. Because when it fucks you, it goes in real slow and deep. So if you're moving fast and it's coming, you can jump out the way and run to the left. Because the big penis in the sky, it don't move that fast. It doesn't move that fast. But if you get caught, it's because you're rooted, stagnant. Just and rooted in beliefs that don't work for you. I'll give you a great example. Uh, Facebook. I've noticed that people say things about, and to give you background, I don't believe in the concept of race that most people do. Like, I don't believe the black race, the white race. I believe that everyone's human and everyone comes from different cultural and ethnic backgrounds, but there's only one race because if you do the taxonomy research, People of different species can't fuck. And like, I give you an example. Someone was talking about like you could a cat can mate with a tiger. Actually, a cat cannot mate with a tiger. Can't do it. That shit has to be done in the lab. And even with that, there's a lot of shit that goes into it. What I'm saying is, any human from any ethnic background from any part of the world can fuck another human, and a baby can be the result. That's because we're all the same species. But with that. Uh, on the race deal, I hear people, black people, like, shit ain't changed, and there's a war on black people. Yeah, there's a war on black people. Fucking other black people. I can be, and I'm going to say this, and this is going to piss off a lot of my black subscribers, you may leave. I can be hanging out with a racist, someone I know who thinks that black people are mentally inferior, 
but he's not violent and be safer than one of my brothers who's purportedly has love for me but sees that I'm doing well in life well so he's slipping let me take his shit it's a fucked up thing it's a mind thing and you know I've told that to a few and they don't like that shit but it's true because I lived next door to a racist for years this racist invited me over we had dinner we hung out and we had a lot of great conversations and this person was a racist self-identified and even when well you know Glenda you're not like the rest of them I'm like yes I am you just choose to like me because uh, we have a conversation and you think I'm kind of on your level and you know you used to joke about that but this guy would do me no more harm than my mother yet he was a racist yet some black person I don't fucking even know but we can will fucking rob and steal from me maybe kill me because I have some nice shit in my life. Think about that. Marinate on that shit. Because when people say shit hasn't changed, you're missing some salient points. A lot of shit has changed on every front that you can imagine. But if you are not educating yourself, you are not reading, you're not reading books, you're not thinking for yourself, you won't have these thoughts and you won't see these observations. Because... You are chewing hard on the celery sticks of the Matrix. That's what you're doing. You're chewing so hard on the celery sticks of the Matrix. You just, yeah, shit's the same. Shit's the same. Mm -hmm. Shit's, oh, shit is the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's not the same. Not even close to the same. But because you don't do the introspection, because you don't pay attention. 19. 95, 96, I saw that we had entered a phase where it was more about class than purportedly race, just for the sake of this conversation, I used that term. When I went to check my post office box, and there was this grungy white dude there. I don't know why he was just standing in front of the post office. It was about 6 p.m., post office closed. No, it's around 7. I pull up, <clears throat> there's a car already there. I get out. The, uh, the lady in the car gets out abruptly to the point she causes a commotion that makes me go like, what the hell's going on? So we basically enter the post office at the point where she gets there. Then I, I hold the door open for her because she's that close to me. And we get in and she says, oh, I'm so glad you showed up. That guy was scaring me. The white guy was scaring the white woman and she felt comfortable with the black guy. You know why? Because I look professional. I had the scrubs on, I was shaved, you know, I was actually bigger than I am now, I was even more diesel. And I thought about that, and then after the event was over, it wasn't a big exchange, and we didn't make love or have coffee or nothing like that. She went and checked her box, I checked mine, she got in her car, I got in mine, life went on. But just looking at that event, and I sat in my car for about 15 minutes thinking about it, I was like, I used to be the buggy man. I used to be the boogeyman. I was just like, maybe I'm obtuse, but when I'm around, I don't see people locking their doors. I walk in the neighborhood that's predominantly white. There's some city Jews. I've never had anyone cross the street to get to the other side when I approach. Shit hasn't happened to me. But once again, it's that energy. If you have what I call the world's trying to get me and fuck me type energy, you scare people away. If you have positive energy that, hey, you know, this stranger's fucking gonna help me because that's just how this shit goes in my life. You're gonna get you're gonna yield those results. You're gonna yield those results. So understand how you think black, white, green, purple, whatever fucking color you are, is more important than the environmental situation. It is more important. And you know, I talk to you know other friends of mine who just happen to be black and I have a few who are very progressive who have similar experiences. Then I have another group. Nah, man, that shit don't happen to me. And I look at the things they say, and this is the biggest truism of all. There is no grand plan of separation. People self-segregate and very proud about it and get weird when challenged on that assumption. People self-segregate. I don't take to, well, there's the black community. No, I live wherever the fuck my money will allow me to live. That's my mindset. This whole black white thing is going to fuck a lot of people because the real deal is classism. 
The real deal is there's a group of people that's controlling stuff. Because I want you to think about this. 10% of the world's population owns 90% of the property of this earth. And they're not making any more land. 10% owns 90% of the property. Think about that. And if you're in the United States, you're in a, you're in a position to be one of that 10%. More, you have more of a chance of doing that than any other person in any other country in the world. That's how great this country is. And people are like, oh, you know, you're just waving the flag. I'm like, you damn skippy. I grew up in the house where at one point I was going through the garden in the middle of the night to use the fucking outhouse. There are people in other parts of the world who were born the same year that I was and they're still going to that outhouse because their situation hasn't changed because their culture and their government has the situation that what you're born into is where you remain for life. It's not like that here. It's not like that. And for people who don't really appreciate that, you're fucking stupid. Because you are missing out on massive opportunity by thinking about stupid, dumb shit. That's why I'm like, you know, I hear people like, I'm leaving the United States. I'm like, really? Where the fuck are you going? I can understand if you are a person that has tremendous skill sets and you could take your skill sets around the world and make money. I get that. But if you just like frustrated and you just Joe average American with no fucking assets, no fucking money, no special skill sets, where the fuck are you going? You know, a lot of countries, they're not going to let you just move to their country and you don't have a retirement plan in place because they're not, they don't want you to come down there and become a suck on their system. That's right. You just can't move to another country. They're like, yeah, you're moving here. Uh, we need to say, oh, you got to retire. They want to know because they don't want you to become a problem. Yeah, they're smart like that. So understand. Don't go around asking anyone to hold your dick. That's your responsibility. That's your job. You know where all the special spots are. So handle your business, player do that. All right. This is Glendon and I will see you on the good side.